Hello, everybody. Welcome to Birdgrass Missionary Baptist Church in our noonday Sunday school lesson. Today's lesson comes from the book of Lamentations, and it's going to cover a little territory, but there's much more to be covered. But we're going to try to get in as much as we can. Lamentations is a poem of suffering, of, of feeling hurt, neglected. And there's a reason for that, the reason they feel that way. But before we get to that, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, above, because you are above all things, and you're the only God. You're the one that we worship, and you're the one that shows us the right way to go correctly. And it's you, Heavenly Father, that has made us not strangers, but made us to be one of your children. We thank you for it, Lord, and we thank you for healing. We thank you, Lord, for forgiving. We thank you, Lord, for nourishing. We thank you, Lord, for bringing life into us. It all comes from you. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for those that would like to join in worshiping you, that they will find a way to make it to Bear Grass or some other church where the gospel is preached. We pray for those that are ill. We pray for healing. And we ask you, Heavenly Father, to comfort those that are having very, very rough, difficult times. We ask these things in the only name we can possibly do, through Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, whom no man comes to except when he comes to Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, if you would, uh, let's do a little background. A little background is this, that... Uh, Israel had been divided for many years, and they all had different things that they were worshiping, and none of them were gods. They were gods that they had been making up on their own. But still, Jesus still spoke to them. He still told them about his endless love for them. And even though sometimes it seemed that their love was coming in vain, yet he gave it to them. And he had done everything he could to get them to turn to him. Now, the last thing he's going to do, he's going to do what this lesson talks about. And that's where he takes them into bondage. He takes them into uh, ba Babylon, Babylon, <coughs> where he's been, they are being held as captives. Being there as captives, they had to do what the people from Babylon did and follow them, the people from Babylonia, the way that they live. Certain foods they ate, certain drinks they drank, and the Jewish people were trying to abstain from doing that, but it was very not only tempting, it was also demanding. So they are there in the land, and they're being mistreated, but yet still, they have the grace of God upon them. And that grace is that they're able to move about, have to, they're able to have their own houses, their own land, and worship God when they could in their own privacy. So there in ceaseless love, would you please turn to Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3. Remember I told you that this is a prayer for a funeral prayer. It's for mourning. They're mourning how they end up without God to protect them, how they ended up having to depend on others. It is a ceaseless rendition of mourning. And we'll see some of the verses here that let you know that they're mourning, that they're highly hurt, tears coming down, but they have been warned many, many times about it from the Lord don't do this. Don't go this way. But they decided to go their own way. Here we go with verse number 16. He has also broken my teeth with gravel. He has covered he has covered me with ashes. Who would like to have that done to them? Crash, they take your teeth 
and they rub them in your face, and so much that they break off. And therefore, you have no tea father to eat with, and you also have the pain of being someone that has to go through the pain of suffering because of their disobedience. Now, we're not talking about just one individual. No, no. We're talking about a whole nation. And we could look at that whole nation verse by verse and see how they are being mistreated because they did not follow the Lord. Verse number 17. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forgot a, his prosperity. I forgot about prosperity. I forgot about good times and being able to live in a wonderful house and be able to have family and friends over like that because I have rejected you. So therefore you have taken this drastic deeds to bring the people back to God. And we see this ourselves nowadays that many times God has to bring us back because if he doesn't bring us back, no one else can. It is what you call the last thing of desperation for someone you love to bring them back. <clears throat> Verse 18. And I said, my strength and my hope perish from the Lord. Have you ever thought about that your strength it comes from the Lord? Mine does also. And I think about that. That's the reason sometimes I'm without strength. And when I say be without strength, I'm not talking about physical strength. I'm talking about mental strength, the mental capacity to do the things the Lord would have me to do and to speak when he says speak and to listen to him. Because all of my help comes from who? Comes from the Lord. That's wonderful to know. Verse number 19. Remembering my affliction and my misery. The woodworm and the gall. The woodworm and the gall were nasty little animals and insects that you didn't want to have anything to do with. But they were being probably fed with those then because they did not follow the Lord's rules. Now, it's going to turn. It's going to change back to their benefit. But it takes time for that to happen. It's when God wants it to happen. That's when it happens. Not when you decide, well, I've had enough of this. I'm going to do what I want to do. It's when God decides that things are going to change. And when he says things are going to change, you're going to hear some very familiar words in this. Because as I said earlier, it is a poem. It is a poem of suffering. So when the suffering is about to end, we'll, we'll hear from God <coughs> as he helps correct and shows his love and devotion for his people. Now look at verse number 21. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope still, there's hope, brothers and sisters, there's still hope for us if we turn and come back to Jesus and stay with him. He makes it right for us. He and he alone can do it. But you have to remember that you got yourself, Keith, in his position on your own. You're the one that disobeyed. You're the one that went obedient. You're the one that played tricks and did things that you shouldn't do. So what do you expect? For you know what the Lord does? He's so gracious, so lovable, that he turns those things away. Now, I'll let you go to one more place. Take your Bibles and go with me, please, to uh, Jeremiah chapter 27. I'll tell you what, let's, let's get who is the culprit, who's the one that caused the people of Israel to end up being in captivity like this. It wasn't the people of the other country, it was them. They're the ones that got their own selves in trouble. But let's see how God deals with them. Chapter 27. Verse 
verse number 18. And what it is you're going to talk about that there were false prophets there that still tried to mislead them in the wrong direction. These false prophets would tell them, oh, this captivity that you're in here in Babylonia, it's only going to last for a while. It lasted longer than a while. And many people were there because of the disbelief in the fact that they did not obey God. And being there, they had left a land, what was the, the uh, word that they always say about Israel? It is a land that's what? Filled with what? Milk and honey. And they had left that because of their disobedience, because of their rebellion, and because they did not take the Lord seriously when he told them what he would do and how he would do it. He gave them many warnings, but finally he got tired of giving warnings and he, what did he give them instead? He gave them captivity in Babylon. There was the Babylon people. You had to obey their rules, eat the food they ate, as I said earlier, and do the things that they said to do. It was a punishment that they brought upon themselves. And there were under kings that were set under them, or I guess you could say that they were like lieutenants. And th those people were set there to, really they were there to use the people from, from, from Israel as their slaves, but God had a better plan for them. Uh, as I said, chapter 27, verse number 16. Also, I spake to these priests and to all of the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophets prophesied unto you, saying, Behold, the vessel of the Lord's house shall now be shortened. He is brought again from Babylonia for the prophecy uh, like unto you, the prophecy that he made. They had some false priests there. And those false priests were telling them, you're only going to be here for a short time. And in fact, they said, 40 years, we'll be out of here. We'll be back in, in Israel, living in our land and doing what we want to. But that isn't what God said. God said 70 years. He told Daniel, it's going to be 70. So by it being 70 years, there would be some people that would not be able to return back to Israel. They would end up dying there in Babylonia. You know, God could do the same thing to us. He can set our time and make it more difficult if we disobey Him and we don't listen and follow Him. We have to want to to do his will. We have what to, to follow him. And th let's see, there's a first couple of verses here that we should look at about this situation and how it changes. In a snap of a second, God can change the victorious, the wonderful things that he's given us. He can take them away. In a footstep, he can take them away. But he does it because of what? Because of his ceaseless love for us. And I thank him for it. One more verse and then we'll be finished. Let me pull my Bible a little bit closer. Here. Really two more. This is a key verse here. It is of the Lord's mercies that you are not consumed because his compassion faileth not. 23. They are new every morning. Great is our faithfulness. Have you heard those words before? Great is our faithfulness. I have. And I know it to be true. 
because he shows us his faithfulness day by day. The last verse. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, I will hope in who? In thee. That's who they should put their hope in. And the same thing goes true with me. It is the Lord that I put my hope in. This uh, affliction that they were going through was no joy. Now, I want to back up here uh, to the verse, first verse of the, of the lesson, and then we'll conclude. He has also broken my teeth with gravel, stones, and has covered me with ashes. This is a terrible punishment, but it comes from a punishment with someone that's stronger than you. And a person that's strong with you is able to do anything they want to. But the Lord steps in and he gives us strength. He gives us uh, ability to go about. He gives us everything he had given in the beginning and more because of his love for his people. The Book of Lamentations is very short, but it doesn't take very much to tell you what you need and what God can do for us to see it. And we can see it every day ourselves also. We can see good or bad. It's up for us to decide which one we, we choose that we want to participate in. I don't want bad. Leave bad for those that, that decide to neglect, to not, to not to be obedient, to not to follow the Lord. Those are the ones that get the ashes and also the sackcloth is coming too. When you sit in sackcloth because you have been disobedient. I'm sorry that uh, we don't have more time. I need to dig deep into the lesson because I haven't dug deeply as I should. But I can see this. I can see that the Lord says, He is faithful. And because He is faithful, we should be faithful also. Why? Because we are His. Thank you for joining us for this luncheon today time and Sunday school lesson on our being a part of and receiving. What do we receive? We receive a ceaseless love. One that even though you've been punished, Still the Lord loves you and still he cares. Thank you for joining us. Let us close with prayer. Heavenly Father above, many times we stand in need. I stand in need of you today. Days past, days to come. I always will need you. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that I may fulfill what you would have me to do and know your great love. There is no one like you. Morning by morning, you are the beauty that we see. Thank you, Lord, because they make us strong and they give us the things that we stand in need of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.